Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for February the 20th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Leviticus chapters 24 and 25 and Mark chapter 4 verses 1 through 20. The title of my devotional is The Year of Jubilee. And we're going to be looking at Leviticus 25 verse 9 which says, You shall then sound a ram's horn abroad on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement, you shall sound a horn all through your land. After seven sevens of years, the fiftieth year is to be hallowed as a jubilee, in which all mortgage lands are to be returned to the original family. The Day of Atonement, already the greatest day of the Jewish calendar, is made even more significant because the year of Jubilee began on this day, every 50th year. God provided relief for those who fall on hard times. And that's what the Day of Jubilee is all about, is it's a day of reversal. It's a day of blessing. It's a day of God's help and comfort. And so every seventh year was to be a year of rest for the land, a time where the people showed their trust in God to provide, also giving themselves, the land, and the poor a chance to rest in him. It was like a Sabbath year, in other words. Um, Leviticus 25 verses 1 through 7 lay this out. For Hebrew indentured slaves, they are to be released every seventh year. Slavery was not to be permanent, except in the case where it is voluntary. And we see that in Exodus 21, 1 to 6. Now, every 50th year indent, indent, sorry, um, yeah, every 50th year was especially a time of freedom because not only were slaves released, but all lands were returned to their original families. And so what we see here is, um, a total return to God's original intention, that there may have been wrong decisions, bad um, financial moves, there may have been disaster that struck a family and they were forced to, to make decisions that they didn't like or um, that really were beyond their own control. But what God does is he says, your, your time of poverty and of difficulty will have an end. And so he sets that for all Israel that it's the 50th year. And what that means is that there, that in your time, in your lifetime, you will experience a year of jubilee. Like most people lived more than 50 years. And so here what we have is in your lifetime, you will experience this reversal, this time of blessing, this time of going back. So you had to sell your... Um, sell yourself into slavery in order to pay your debts or something terrible like that. Well, it's not going to be forever. God always wants there to be light at the end of the t- tunnel and even a time of great restoration, um, a time of reversal, um, a reversal even of the curse. And so there is, interestingly enough, as great as this this promise and um, and the commands are detailed in terms of what Israel's to do. There is no evidence that Israel ever practiced the Sabbath or Jubilee years, like the Sabbath year every seventh year or the Jubilee year every 50th year. The Jubilee year was later focused on the time of the Messiah who would proclaim liberty to the captives and the favorable, favorable year of the Lord, the favorable year of the Lord that we see in Isaiah 61 um, verse 2 is the year of Jubilee. It's that year where God will show his favor, his blessing on Israel again, and they would experience through this restoration of land and relationships uh, and so on. The same word for liberty is used in Leviticus 25 verse 10 to describe the release of the year of Jubilee. Jesus then quotes Isaiah 61, 1 to 2 as announcing his mission in Luke 4 verses 8 and 19. And he says to those who are present, this has now been fulfilled in your hearing. And so with the coming of Jesus, he is the one who proclaims the year of the Lord's favor. Now understand he comes to bring and grant forgiveness of sins. And when did that take place? It took place especially on the day of atonement. And so Jesus is the one sacrifice for all time, for all people, And he accomplished that on the cross. And so this becomes the greatest day of atonement. This becomes the greatest sacrifice, the fulfillment of all the sacrifices, and also the fulfillment of the year of Jubilee. And the promise is that he is going to restore everyone to peace, to health, 
to um, to to righteousness um, in in Him. So the remission of, of debts is definitely fulfilled most explicitly in the forgiveness of sins brought about through Jesus. But it also works out in the lifestyles and economics of God's people, as seen in Acts 4.34, where it says, For there was not a needy person among them, for all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sale. God stamps out poverty among the people. That's what the year of Jubilee was intended to do. And that's what takes place in Jesus for God's people. Rooker posits the trumpet, that's Rooker is a, is a commentator, he posits the trumpet blast at the commencement of the Jubilee may be a type of the trumpet announcing the return of Christ. So not only do we experience God's great blessings in Christ in time, but the complete reversal of the curse and all the blessings that God has for his people in terms of inheritance, in terms of a place, um, in terms of a new body and resurrection, all those good, eternal life in heaven with him, all those things are going to be fulfilled at Jesus' second coming. So not only does the year of Jubilee extend to believers now in a, in a very real and, and present reality, but it also looks forward to the future hope uh, of the believer. And so we have these two parts. Jesus has come to bring forgiveness and new life, and he's at work in us, but he also promises that he will complete and finish that work when he returns. So have you experienced God's Jubilee here, where you've been released from your debt of sin, have you extended that grace to others, showing forgiveness and grace? And do you live with a constant, expectant hope that God's going to finish the work that he's begun in Christ Jesus? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you that Jesus has come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the year of Jubilee. And Lord, we should live there. Uh, but Lord, also we know that you will finish and complete the work. So Lord, let us live in your grace now, even as we have you the hope of Jesus' second coming firmly in our minds um, and knowing that this isn't all there is. Even as great as this life is, the blessings the out, you outpour, you're not finished yet, and we eagerly await the return of Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.